Hey guys, this is concerning and I find that concerning what's going on near Grindavik. So it was an earthquake north of Grindavik and we know what that means. The earthquakes usually could tell us where we will see the next eruption happening and the next eruption will happen because the magma chamber under Swartzengi and the Blue Lagoon is super, super full, higher than it has been when the last eruptions occurred. Only in December, it had a higher level of magma in it and it's reaching that level as well. We're at a level of over 14 million cubic meters right now. And the last eruptions occurred when it had a level between 8 million and 30 13 million cubic meters. You can see the graphs here. This graph is two days old, so we're further ahead now. It's the red line with the round dot. The squares in the other lines mean there was only an intrusion, and the stars mean there was an eruption. So now that the current eruption that has lasted a month and a half, so to speak, almost two months, um, has died off since a few days. The land is still rising underneath Swartzengi and the pressure is building up. And these new earthquake swarms that are happening are an indication where the next thing could happen. And now it's an earthquake just north of Grindavik, close to Grindavik. And we know they're building a second row of defense walls inside the current defense walls closer to Grindavik because the old eruptions lava has already breached the first row of defense walls. Now they're worried if there's a new event and the lava is flowing that fast again, which it will, and very liquid, it could breach these defense walls and flow right into Grindavik because from that almost two month long eruption, a lava carpet was building up, lava flowing on top of each other, like exceeding the height of the defense walls. It's four meters higher than the defense walls in some northeastern areas. So it's easy for the new lava to flow over that and then flow right into Grindavik. So it'll take about two and a half more weeks until they're finished with these new defense walls. But it's rumbling, so let's look into this. There were 136 earthquakes on the Reykjanes Peninsula in only the last 48 hours that that's what the Icelandic Meteorological Office says. And since the end of the eruption, the seismicity in this area has returned with increased intensity and is now concentrated at the southern end of that fissure system. So southern, that's closer to Grindavik. The southern end of that fissure system lies just north of Grindavik. And there was a striking number of earthquakes that are again located in this area, basically between Mount Thorbjörn and Grindavik. So super, super close to Grindavik. So many are asking, is this next event the end of Grindavik? Is this it? Well, we don't know, nobody knows. But I can tell you the signs that are occurring they're not so great because it seems to be so close to Grindavik this time. So the same earthquake patterns are occurring that we have seen since the end of October, since that first magma intrusion happened on November 10th. And these seismic swarms occurred just a few days before the next event or on the day of the next event. So the next event could be the formation of a new magma dike or another eruption. And with the magma chamber being that full, well, it could very likely be an eruption, especially since the area in the Sutnuka crater series, the crust is very damaged and very brittle by all these eruptions and tremors and intrusions. So it's easier for magma to find its way to the surface. Both another intrusion under Grindavik or another eruption inside Grindavik or so close to Grindavik could be fatal for that little fishing town of Grindavik. The town has already been so severely affected by the events through the earthquakes on November 10th. So many fissures and sinkholes have opened underneath buildings, on the roads, cracked open, destroyed infrastructure. They kept repairing it, but homes have tilted. Homes are unusual. They're damaged. They're cracked. It's, it's devastating for the residents of Grindavik and, of course, for the businesses in the town. That's why people are moving away from Grindavik. Right, the town is basically dead. There is no school, nothing. There are some businesses in 
the port, but the government is buying out the residents, buying out the homes of the residents that's is in process right now. So, but what would happen to Grindavik if we had something new? So on the one hand, a new magma tunnel intrusion that would go under Grindavik like it did on November 10th would cause strong earthquakes, strong earth movements that would extend beneath the city. And that could further damage many of the already damaged buildings, could tear heating pipes, electric cables, again, could open even more fissures and, and ruptures and sinkholes. That could be it for Grindavik. Underneath Grindavik, it already looks like a Swiss cheese. Even before the November 10th event, there were old fissures, right? I don't know what they were thinking when they built there. I mean, it's an old settlement. The Reykjanes Peninsula has been dormant for over 800 years. So they were probably thinking, well, all these long fissures there, that's a thing of the past. The golf course, they have been playing golf between two long fissures, two long old fissures. And they were joking, well, if your golf ball falls in there, then that's it, right? The golf course has been heavily damaged in some areas by the November 10th event. And if you look at these aerial pictures here from Google Earth, you can see it like scars. And there's this map that the Icelandic Meteorological Office shows the black lines with the crosses. These are all existing fissures. And by the November 10th event, these have been gotten wider, longer, and sudden sinkholes have formed very, very deep, up to like 100 feet or more depth. One worker lost its life trying to fill these cracks, he fell in there, he vanished, right? So that's dangerous for the town. But then on the other hand, the question is, if there is a new eruption with this fast flowing lava and if it's closer to Grindavik, will the defense walls be able to divert that lava again? Will that hold? And then the question is, how long will the next eruption last? Because let's say it's closer to Glendavik and it will last longer again. Then lava will build up again and threaten these defense walls, even if you have two rows of defense walls. And if there's an eruption inside the defense wall area, like we've seen in January when three homes burned down, then that could be it completely for the town. I mean, some of you are saying, well, maybe that would be the solution because the lava would fill in all these cracks and then they could rebuild. I don't know, guys. I don't think you would ever want to be rebuilt. But you know, the thing is, when you hear the reports about the town, yes, the people are being bought out, but they want the right of first refusal. They want to have the right to buy the homes back. And, and they want, there are some organizations, they want to revive the city. They're still positive. Of course, the businesses want to keep going. There's tourist organizations that say, let's haul in tourists and buses to make reservations in the restaurants and then drive them back out. So stuff like this, and of course the port, is a main, main, main infrastructure that that creates a lot of money for Iceland, right? So that's why the next event is monitored very, very clo closely because it could be way more altering than the last ones. Maybe, maybe not, right? Also, the scientists are saying that they know that they don't know. So particularly north of Grindavik and the northeast of Grindavik, the lava field there has become so high from the last eruption that, as I said, exceeds the height of the dams by several meters. So if there was a new strong surge of lava, it could quickly overcome them. And then there would be some like not waterfalls lava falls that would form and then they would run down there that would increase the speed of the lava that would flow into Grindavik. Also the land rise underneath the Swartzengi area where we have the Lagunis and the power plant is increasing it's still rising. They're saying that the latest measurements of the land rise show that the land rise is getting a little bit less, that it's leveling off, but they've said that before and they were wrong. It was just um, measurement inaccuracies. Or, so it's, it, they need to monitor this over a longer time frame. So it's either 
measuring is wrong or there's really less magma being pumped into that magma chamber. What does that mean? If the magma chamber is full, if it reaches the point of maximum elasticity, it cannot hold any more magma. So that's not a good sign that you would say, well, then if there's not more magma flowing in, then whew, we're out of the danger zone. No, that's when usually the magma is sent on its way somewhere else. And then it could cause an intrusion or an eruption. So a slowing rate of land rise underneath Swartzangi was often the signal that an eruption or an intrusion is imminent. And there's some interesting theories that are arising now because we had a very, very unique situation. While this March 16th eruption had started, it was going. The land rise underneath Srotsengi and the Blue Lagoon also kept going. And in the past eruption, we have seen eruption started, land was subsiding because the magma chamber was getting empty, emptied out into the eruption. But the unique situation that we had here in this long eruption phase, while it was erupting, the magma chamber was slowly rising. It didn't show any sign of subsiding. And something like this has never been documented before, neither in Iceland nor anywhere else in the world. So what was happening? And then also interesting is that once the eruption died off, normally we would say, well, where does the magma go if it's not coming out of the eruption anymore? Shouldn't the land rise underneath Strotsengi increase now? It hasn't increased. So some people are wondering, the March eruption, the March 16th eruption, was that fed by the same magma chamber or was this coming from somewhere else? Because the system started to behave weirdly. On March 2nd, there was only a small magma intrusion, only just a little bit was flowing out of the magma chamber. And then two weeks later, the last eruption started. So could that eruption have been fed by something that comes straight up from a deeper magma reservoir? Or is there another magma reservoir? These theories have already surfaced when we saw the January eruption because that eruption was a little bit further east from the usual magma dike and Suknuta Sudnuka crater series. And then they were completely surprised by the second fissure that opened up so close to Grindavik. So there were the series, is there another magma chamber? But then they kind of said, no, it's all coming from the same thing. So nobody knows what's going on underneath. So this is strange. So anything could happen in my opinion. And you know, the University of Iceland kind of says, Fagradalsfjall, the Fagradalsfjall eruption had its own magma chamber. But is that really so? There were also theories that they're all connected by a deeper magma reservoir. We just simply don't know. There is no science there yet that can really show us what's going on underneath the Earth's crust. And that's why it's a guessing game. It's absolutely a guessing game. So many of you have written to me, said, wow, look at the solar flares, the solar activity. Could that have an impact on the volcanic eruptions, on the magma? Well, the science is unclear about that as well. I mean, one fact we know for sure, we have been able to see beautiful northern lights. For some reason, I haven't. I've always been running out looking at the front of the house, at the back, everywhere, while everyone around me was posting pictures of the northern lights and how beautiful they are. And I was looking at plain darkness. I saw the moon lit up, but I, I was just not seeing it. And I was out during the time when they were supposed to be there. So I was mad. I was like really, really mad, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, there is speculation that solar activity could influence volcanic eruptions in an inverse proportion. And according to one theory, there is stronger volcanic activity during times of solar minimum than times of maximum. Um, which the sun is now heading towards. So the reason for this is said to be the high energy cosmic radiation. And of that radiation, more that hits the earth, 
the less active the sun is. So the charged particles of the radiations are then supposed to penetrate deep into the Earth's interior and increase the temperature there. And then they're saying that would create more rocks to melt into magma. So it is difficult to find or to provide relevant scientific evidence for this. So it's all only speculation. There were more radiation particles detected. Um, they made an experience in a mine, but it's doubtful whether they these particles, these radiation particles, have an influence on the formation of new magma. We may be able to see more northern lights um, as there have been more strong solar storms. There could be more. So maybe I will see them too. And if I see them, I'll, I'll record them so that I can show you. So I'll, I'll, I'll be on the lookout for them. So that's my quick update about what's going on in Iceland. We're just still waiting. We have to wait and see what this volcanic system will provide us with. In the meantime, I'll put a video in the end screen. Um, look at what's going on in Brazil. I have quite a few viewers from Brazil. In the province, Rio Grande do Sol, it's devastating, a flood that they have never seen in their lifetime, never had in that area. So many farms are affected. The capital has been affected. Millions of people, thousands of animals have lost their lives as well as people. It's an absolute tragedy. I have made a video about it showing two beautiful stories where a doggy and a horse have been rescued. Check out the video in the end screen um, and check out the other videos there too. Check out my channel. There's a lot about Iceland, Campi Fligri or the Titan Submersible. Please leave this video a like guys. It helps my channel. And by the way, in that video about Brazil, there's some more of my farm stuff and I'm introducing my stallion that you haven't seen before. So check it out guys and check out my channel. Subscribe if you're new here. I'd love to see you again. And uh, for all the others guys, um, I'm having another coffee i made myself a cold brew because there's more videos in the works today it's busy on the earth there's more that i want to report so stay tuned check my channel regularly for updates i'm releasing one to two videos per day so if you don't get a notification that it's just a bug in youtube check out my channel guys thank you so much bye bye